Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Emmy. I'm Rebecca. Got it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> First take. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> There's four of us. That was that could have gone horrible. They're veterans. Uh, They're used to it. <laughs> this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Uh, as always, we have been socially distancing before it was mandated. Uh, I'm in the Midwest. Ross is in the Northeast, and everybody else is on the West Coast. Yes, yeah, so we're guys... trying to survive fires. The sun is like bright orange right now, and it is hot as balls. But fortunately, the wind is not blowing yet, which is good. But yeah, it's really weird up here in Oakland. The, That's the... good for the fires, but isn't it like 105 degrees? It's not good for the fire. Well, yeah, the wind, the fact that there's no wind is good for the fires. But yeah, it's really, really warm. I am. I just had a popsicle, and I'm like overheating already. <laughs> Do you have <laughs> AC in your house? Um, no. Yeah, I said But like, my house is like in, in like a basement area, so it stays actually pretty cool. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, my, my cousin just moved to Seattle and they were having a heat wave and he, they literally don't have air conditioning in the house. They're, yeah. they're not used yeah. to heat. We don't have air conditioning in our house and it's, it was 80. Really? It was 88 degrees today. I mean, but I live like a half a block from the beach. We have beautiful weather Constant year-round. Constant breeze. So, yeah, every once in a while, we just have to suffer through a hot day. But yeah, tough it out. It's unhealthy. Yeah, yeah, it's penance for the rest of the days that are great. <laughs> <laughs> Balancing act. Evens it out. <laughs> so normally we discuss the news early, but I, there's you guys are the news. There's literally no yep. other news. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the show. Yeah. Like, so we'll just jump right into your stuff. So what do you guys want to talk about first? Because we can go all over the place. <laughs> I mean, the scoop of all scoops, I would say. The, the big yeah. One. Yeah. So, so, you know, um, as you guys know, we talked to you earlier about how we did the Rebel Rally last year, which is Rebel Rally is a seven-day all-female navigational rally that starts in Lake Tahoe and ends in the dunes of Glamis. And so last year we won the crossover class in a Rolls Royce Cullinan. And then we thought, how could we possibly top a Rolls? So <laughs> we had a <laughs> And if they would let us drive their electric pickup truck in the Rebel Rally, and they said, okay, so we're driving an electric pickup truck. That's the coolest thing ever. So, so my favorite part of this is there are already images online of you guys ripping around in it. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah. where we, we don't know how much you can say on the subject, but you've obviously had seat time already, right? Yes, we did. Uh, we did oh get to go God. out in Glamis and um, we got to kind of see a little bit like what the dunes would do to the range. But the biggest deal, I think, was that if, if, if people know Glamis, we were able to get the truck up Oldsmobile Hill, Whoa. which the last time we went up Oldsmobile Hill, Rebecca walked it. <laughs> right. right, right, right. We told that story. <laughs> did you, uh, so, did you stay in it this time? What was that, Rebecca? Did, did you did stay, you in, stay the in last time? time? Uh, this time, I stayed in the truck, and we actually. Um, and the most shocking thing, beyond getting up the damn thing without having to trek up it, <laughs> um, was that the second attempt when we tried to do it, um, I turned around and was like, "What is that smoke? What is that smoke?" And I just kept thinking, what have we burned out in the damn vehicle already? <laughs> <laughs> we um, broke it already. <laughs> what did we break? And because uh, that was the first, like the very first thing I asked, I mean, um, was please don't break it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. But um, I was like, what is that, what, what is that white smoke? It, and uh, it turned out it, uh, it was, we were doing a burnout in the sand. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> We actually did a burnout going uphill. Up Holy hill. shit! I didn't know that you could do that. Um, so the truck is the truck is on. Um, I, I I think I can say this. It's in all the photos. Um, Pirelli Scorpions, a tire I don't wow. have a lot of experience with. Yeah. 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 Not I a think, hugely widely used off road tire. No, no. I mean the tread looks pretty good. I don't know what the sidewall strength is, mm -hmm. um, but I think that was a compromise for on-road range and off-road capability. So, Fair enough. you know, we're taking some fares. Um, but because that vehicle can put out 
829 pound feet of torque. Jeez. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna burn out. It's gonna burn out. So, right. um, what we ended up doing, we came back down and we uh, let some more air out of the tires just to get a little bit more grip. And then it was able to scoot on up to the top and we were yelling and screaming and like, go, 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 we're gonna <laughs> fuck up for it. And some cursing, you know, out of it. Yeah, there was some cursing. It was pretty funny. Yeah, that's a pretty gnarly hill too. That's like, that's one of the famous ones at Gladys. Yeah, it's like yeah, 176 yeah. feet uh, high and 27 degree uh, incline. Jesus. So That's it way up. Yeah, and like at the bottom, you know, there's always like whoops at the bottom. So it's a matter of like, you try to, you think like, oh, there's no whoops over there. And then when you finally get lined up to it, you're like, oh, there's a whole bunch of whoops. So like on the left-hand side is kind of where they're the, the least whoopy. Um, and it's just a matter of like, how much speed can you maintain through those whoops? Like how much can your suspension take? And like, you know, I can't talk about any of that stuff yet, but I can say that the second side when we got up. So, yeah. So, but you can say air suspension, right? Yeah. Can, everybody knows it's air suspension. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because you can see in the, even in the pictures, there's a huge change in ride height. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of different ride heights. So the max, uh, ground clearance you can get is like 14 and a half inches, I think. Whoa. And Awesome. Yeah, which is like nuts. And then the water fording is 42.7 inches. That's got to be the most of any production vehicle right now. I, I think it is. Because I, I think, think a Wrangler is like 34, 35. Yeah, it's in there. Holy I think it's shit. 34. That's so, insane. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. Chris is so, like, sharing pictures and it's just it's Getting so good. in and out of the vehicle, like it's easy for me because I can just grab the steering wheel. Um, but Rebecca... <laughs> <laughs> trying to get it on the passenger side. Like, Funny you, leap. Rebecca, do you do you pop that like compartment that goes through and through as it's also like a little seat and go in the back door <laughs> I, and I got in it actually. <laughs> it's like parkour to get up in there. there. <laughs> Did you really? I can get in there and like take a nap. It's it's pretty great. You can get it. <laughs> it's kind of messed up wow. I'm making a joke about how small you are and you went you took it one farther. <laughs> I got in there and I didn't get in the frunk, but oh. it's uh, large enough to be a hot tub so there's oh boy. plenty of storage space in that in that truck <laughs> that's hilarious yeah, it's, 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 we're not going to have a bunch of stuff like piling up in the back seat which is mm -hmm. uh, interesting like we've never had that before between the gear tunnel and the front there's a lot of a lot of storage space in this truck so would you want more <laughs> weight in the front like i'm i'm it's a completely different way no, of thinking about it i don't want any more weight yeah at all okay. ever how much does it weigh do we know <laughs> it's, it's a lot. A lot. Um, a lot. I mean, it's, it's a heavy girl. It's funny. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've seen online uh, the Rivian weighs fifty five hundred pounds, and I'm like, mm -hmm. no, oh boy, it's more than that. It's like power wagon weight. It's pretty. It's so pretty like zaptic. not too far off Cullinan weight. Familiar a little territory, bit heavier Cullinan, but yes, a little heavier. Okay. Yeah. More yeah. sidewall though. <laughs> Based on these pictures, <laughs> more so, better, totally better tires, but still, like I don't know, I don't have any experience with the Pirelli. So, so what's we'll the I I vaguely remember you saying you have to either finish on the same tire, or you can only run one type of tire the whole duration of it. No, you can do whatever you wish. Um, you're required to carry one spare. Uh, okay. We're carry two because the one year we only carried one spare was when we got a flat on day one. So. <laughs> Backup for the backup. Yeah. So, and last year, of course, we carried two and we got three flats. Um, so we finished on a plug. Um, but those were, those were obviously special tires. So yeah, it, mm -hmm. there's no tire requirement other than size is limited. So um, maybe I'm just thinking about the size of the tires you had to find for last year. Last year, that fitment uh, issue. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It was a fitment issue. Okay. Uh, mixing up. One lap yeah, of America. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the rules, the rules of the rally say that they can't be more than 35 inches, and I think 12 and a half inches wide, I think is what I read in the rule book. Um, and then, but even if you, like, if you wanted to run a vehicle in the stock class, but let's say it just came with, like, shitty street tires, you could swap them out for a pair of KO2s, and that still counts yeah. as bone stock. So when um, one we don't in want, bone stock. 
uh, in the Jeep, in the Rubicon, we ran it on their stock tires. So we didn't mm -hmm. even change the tires. No. Yeah, because yeah, the, the Rubicon comes with KO2. So like, <laughs> right. that's great. Right. But we, honestly, like, even if we had time and money to swap these out for KO2s, like, I'm not really sure I want to because all of mm -hmm. their testing and all of their range assessments and everything have all been on these tires. So like swapping okay. them out now could be really bad. So there's definitely so, more of not a mind game, but a thought process behind this year than prior years, obviously, like with factoring range anxiety and everything you're, that's coming into effect that isn't, hasn't ever come into effect on a rebel rally before, right? I mean, for, for range and stuff, we, we thought we would have issues last year with the Rolls-Royce range because it was such a giant engine. It was a V12. It was like, we thought <coughs> gas guzzler, it was going to, you know, maybe cause us to have to siphon off gas from someone else. Um, but we didn't end up having that issue. And ultimately, I don't, we didn't even think of it very often. Once we got into the first couple of days, we're like, this is, it's doing really, really well. That's a worry we can throw away. That's not something we're going to experience this year. We're definitely going to be in a constant calculation. I think, um, you know, for as much math as I have to do during this rally, <laughs> um, this year has uh, got a lot of um, more pressure on Emmy for, you know, that kind of figuring out constantly our range. And we're going to be working together to make sure we maximize. But um it's it's a challenge for us with the vehicle. It's a challenge for the rally because it's the first electric vehicle they've had in the rally. So for them, it's also figuring out logistics and how do they how do they keep us going? Um, how do they make mm. it fair? You know, we, it, we're not just doing this as a test. It's full competition for us. So we're right. Are they building in any extra support or any? I guess. Oh my God. Amazing. Yeah. So they've partnered with Power Innovations, which has a lot of experience with military contracts. And essentially mm -hmm. they have built a semi truck that will be at the base camps. I know. I see your confused look on your face. But it will be <laughs> at the base. We'll have giant hydrogen tanks, which will charge a battery. And then we will charge out of that battery because we didn't want to have, we didn't want to like have this electric vehicle and then be like, here's your diesel generator. That's exactly so where I thought we you were going. Sure, yeah, we want to make sure that our charging was also zero emissions. So that is how they will charge the Rivian is through Power Innovations. And also there's a Mitsubishi PHEV, the Outlander PHEV will be yep. in the crossover class. So okay. they'll get some juice for their tiny little battery as well. Um, and then there will be some times where we'll need to charge on course and we don't know exactly how that's going to happen yet because we won't know until the day. Until of. you have to. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that will all be planned through the rally. Like that will be a planned charge through the rally. And I think what they're planning on doing during those times is like, if it's a 20 minute break where the car is charging, we just leave the vehicle and we can't do anything. Rebecca can't plot. We can't mm -hmm. look at the map can't you know we don't get any time yeah. in fact, we're losing right it. hands off like it's it's like the cooking competition shows like your time's up hands in the air yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, to I me it's a red like flag that, like, <laughs> or that thanks chris <laughs> i'm gonna eat lunch and like just watch master chef for, for, right uh, i'm like but, i'm gonna nap yeah <laughs> could you sleep during that time you or does that count sleep. as a Kidding? We get so little sleep during this. I'm sure I could sleep standing up in dinner yeah. line. Right, I just know, but like, will back. they allow just... you to sleep in your scheduled break when the other competitors don't get that yeah. kind of sleep? So <laughs> no, <laughs> they're gonna have a rally person there uh, officiating just... whenever we're charging off course. So I'm. They might even have like dumb little tasks and for us to do. I wouldn't. That would not surprise me. It would not surprise me. Interesting. So what class is it that you're running? Four wheel drive. In four by. Yeah. Okay. You no, know, it you know there's no two speed transfer case, but like obviously, mm -hmm. this is a four wheel drive vehicle. And correct me if I'm wrong. There's an electric motor to drive each individual wheel, right? Yes. Yeah, they're in wheel hub motors. That's fun. It is. So yeah. like, there's no like locker. There's no locker. There's some kind of like brake based thing, but there's no locker. So, so that'll be that. Your locker's based on software. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we were thinking. I was the like, software's you know, never sure. failed. 
basically we're driving a <laughs> don't say that <laughs> yeah i never felt we're driving we're driving a giant computer across all different terrain and computers are super good with dust super reliable um, Shut yeah, up. <laughs> um, and think about it it's the first computer off of their production line so right is it number one uh, yes that's you have number one Ooh, yes. wow is there a, a vin stamp with like or like a a serial zero, number zero zero zero, zero, zero one zero. <laughs> I know they registered the prototypes previously, so I don't know if that, you know, if that's, if those were one, but we're, yeah. we're it's a plate, though. production line. It has a plate. It's plated and registered and all that. It has wow. a plate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, not yeah. I mean, we were thinking, I was thinking to myself, like, you know, when we had the Jeep or when we had the ZR2 or whatever, I mean, I'm neither, I'm not a mechanic by any stretch of the imagination, but like, if something failed, I could look at it and like take a socket and maybe like figure out yeah. a way to just kind of look at that. Yeah, like I could hit it with the hammer and, and I might be able to figure something out. But if this breaks down, well, I don't know. Uh, computer, I so we I were I can't. in the same position last year with the Rolls Royce because there was no manual. There That's was fair. no way to, everything was covered. It's Disassemble like, the whole engine department just to see the block. <laughs> yeah. Touch. And and anything you like went to look in, like, how do I, what's happening here? They're like, uh, consult your dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Call your this one is going to be oh, consult your software engineer. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, but but what price is Rivian? <laughs> Rivian sending people. So if something goes down, um, you know there will be people there that can plug in their computers and do their nerd thing. I mean, so that's good. It just doesn't really help us out in the field if something right happens. right so if we needed help out in the field it would be like any other vehicle out in the field if you called for help it's a penalty or okay. you're, you're out of the competition or what have you it just depends on what you're asking for but if we can make it to base camp there are uh, mechanics there who understand the vehicle who can work on it they're not dedicated to us um, by the rules either so if we pull in and everybody's dedicated to other uh, vehicles trying to fix things, we it's it's a uh, you've got two. You have to wait, and that's it. Wow. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, no, but you get two hours after the once they can start working on your vehicle. So if you get there and there's like three cars ahead of you, yeah. that's fine. But your time doesn't start until the mechanics get to your vehicle. Right. Okay. So, so that's good. Um, but there's also but, only you know, so many hours so many overnight, hours right? We yeah. Have to be with vehicle when it's being worked on too so yeah it it's all a it's all tricky so it's great that they're there it's not a specific advantage other than the fact that someone has that specific knowledge because the guys that are that have been working the rally um as mechanics are amazing they're like macgyver magicians um but the specific knowledge of this vehicle is going to be something that they're they're looking at and learning uh, mm. as they go as well so. i wonder if rivian has like if they're reading and watching code in real time, like behind the scenes, if they have yes. it beamed up, yeah, to they have to be. Yeah. We had, we had a two engineers in the back seat, and he was plugged into the car or to the into the truck, and he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna lift you up one mode." And we're like, "Okay." Like, more the car goes, I'm like, "I didn't do that." <laughs> they won't be that way while we're on the rally, but right. yeah, they're literally someone could yeah, just so, sit in the back seat and go. Is it possible that the truck you have now is one of the trucks that also went from Tierra del Fuego to LA? Yeah, no. no. Prototypes. Okay. Those were pro those were like the last prototypes. Yeah. But I've heard, and we've I'm sure everybody here has seen like the way a concept car is assembled for you know public display. It's impeccable. You know, the the first example is always going to be perfect. So is I wonder. It? if there's like extra, extra, extra care that's gone into this. <laughs> with ex okay, fair, with exception. Yeah, for, with exception. for them, I hope that is the case. I know I've right. also yeah, seen right. some concepts at auto shows that have no moving parts. <laughs> well, this they just has, sit there. Yeah, yeah but the I build mean, quality on the outside was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you know, they, they, we actually, because of COVID, we were originally gonna, they planned that we would have like truck number 30 or 40 um, by now, but because of the delays in uh, getting everything back up and running and stuff, we're we're dealing with number one. Um, it all the 
the first, you know, however many are all definitely hand assembled, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's definitely extra care that goes into it. Um, is there something that would change between ours and like number 40? Uh, it'd be I small. mean, I think there will, like my ride height was on a stock on the steering column and that will actually be in the user interface on the, um, mm -hmm this screen once everything happens and like they also are giving us um a secondary screen with just like all kinds of um engineering data just, basically like aftermarket data like the temperature of the batteries and the temperature of this and the rate of this and that and none of that of course will be incorporated into the vehicle once right, it goes right. On they don't vehicle. want anybody um, to see any of that and part no 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 you don't need to see that you're only getting like you know 10 volts of whatever <laughs> um, <laughs> But we, we also, I mean, we're in a position where we're kind of creating a really unique data collection situation for them. So it's like everything yeah, we're true. doing is going to feed into that. But we're also in a unique situation where we're not even able to use a lot of the user interface because it's GPS enabled and such. So they've so, yeah. disabled quite a bit of that. And so we're, we're down to basics and they don't need yeah. to really do a bunch of fancy UI for us to do this particular event. Yeah, I, I can only think of like, no, well, like the normal gauges you'd be able to read would be like oil temp, you don't have oil. So uh, uh, yeah. like right. fuel, you don't have fuel. Like, right, exhaust temperature, intake temperature. Battery meter and mm. that's it. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a percentage of your battery um, and then there's how many miles of range left, but um, we're probably going to focus more on the percentage of battery because the miles of range can, I mean, that can just vary so much. And Rattle position over like two point. seconds could change that, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. So, and we have got the medium sized battery pack. We've got the 135 kilowatt hour, which under ideal circumstances, um, Rivian says it can go for 300 miles on a single charge. I mean, we'll never see 300 miles on the dirt. Um, we don't know. And they, don't and know. they did learn so much from that, to your point, the Tierra del Fuego to, to LA trip um, for sure. But uh, there's the, the length of time that we're going to be spending off pavement is probably the, the most intense that this will, that they'll have seen so far. Um, yeah. <laughs> so do but you have any... They've built it for, you know, like not... It's not like we're taking an electric vehicle that's built for like urban application. They're, they've built this mm. to work in rural and like adventure wilderness, you know, so. Right, it's a truck. It's inherently a truck. You're not putting all-terrain tires on a, a Model X and <laughs> going off-road. <laughs> yeah. hey. I've got a side note on the Model X. I saw one today. Is there an, a car that looks more like an egg? Yeah, the Model <laughs> Y. Is it more egg-ish? Because like, yeah, it was. It didn't help that it was white and it just turned left in front of me. I was like, <laughs> it's the weirdest looking. Like I, yeah, don't get me bizarre. wrong. I drive big SUVs. I have tons of kids. They, I would love an electric vehicle, which is why as soon as Rivian came out, I was like, yes, because they had an SUV. Like, yeah, yeah. the R1S well, is also amazing. Yeah, so cool. Like, and I was looking at the specs for the R1S, and I was like. It actually, it has a shorter wheelbase, so the breakover angle hmm. is way better, and it's a little bit shorter, too, like, overall. I was like, wait a minute, am I on the wrong vehicle? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. what was, was the only factor in R1T versus R1S just lead time? Like, they're planning on putting the R1T out first? Yeah, the R1T is going to come out first. Um, yeah, they have no... I don't know where they are in terms of the R1S. It's supposed to come out... Um, Sometime in 2021, mm -hmm. the same year, but we'll did they say we'll anything the, about the Rivian? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, all you, all you. <laughs> oh, no, I'm trying not to interrupt. <laughs> um, the so the pricing on these, the Rivian should start at sixty nine thousand, and the R1S is, I believe, seventy two five, starting prices. So I need to sell a kid the number. Yeah, sell a kid. <laughs> <laughs> if you return them to Walmart, Walmart has a pretty good return policy Oof. on kids, so. The, the problem is they all have their own unique qualities, and I like most of them, so. <laughs> <laughs> Remote school has changed my opinion on a couple of them, but other than that. 
I don't know if your wife is going to be too happy when you say, I return one of the kids so that I could buy a Rivian. <laughs> I think she'd be on board. She's really <laughs> frustrated with the remote school, too. <laughs> I've never okay. been so happy in my life to be single. Oh my gosh. Oh. So We're like, hey, we'll make a responsible or decision kidless. here. What could go wrong? Everything. Everything <laughs> can go wrong. Like, but yeah, yeah. I mean, look at all that room that you have in the R1S. It's, well, it's, it's, and it's I, pretty remarkable. I did the research. You can't, uh, supposedly, you can't get the third row and the big battery pack. Mm. Oh, yeah, probably. Which, and I was like, man, 400 miles range. Like, I can do yeah. something with that. Would you want to? Yeah. 400 mile range, you want less people in the car with you for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> you don't want to go 400 miles with eight people. Well, my favorite part of that is like, I, kids home. <laughs> yeah, I have kids. They're going to have to pee in 30 minutes anyway. It's not like I'm going 400 miles without having to stop. So <laughs> just hit every charging opportunity from, from A to B. <laughs> yeah. well, and the, and the, the trucks can go, um, they're CSS charging. They're not CHAdeMO. They're CSS, and they can accept hmm. a charge up to uh, 160 kilowatts. So, like, that's oh, wow. pretty fast. Uh, yeah. Most public DC fast charging stations are only 50 kilowatts, so you could technically charge three times as fast if you found a super duper fast charger. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, you know, California just did this mandate that we're gonna supposed to sell all electric vehicles by 2035. I'm sure. like, that's super cool. I totally appreciate that. And I completely support it. But dude, Newsom, you got to do something about this grid, man. <laughs> we can't use our a lot of infrastructure. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like rolling blackouts. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, Electrify America has come on board with a lot of like super high speed chargers, but it's not enough. It's mm. not enough. So we'll look at this subject for a whole other podcast. But um, there's so... It's just LA with even more gridlock because they'll be gridlocked at the chargers. They'll be gridlocked on the streets. Like you're stuck everywhere. Yeah. I know. I know. So extremely compound you know, problem. We'll see what we'll see what happens. But like, it's kind of I don't know. It was kind of cool driving it in Glamis because everything was so quiet. Like we had a um, a Raptor chase vehicle that was with us, and they had put a bigger uh, turbocharger on it, and. We had the windows down because we're like, we're not using the air conditioner, man. <laughs> so we had the windows down. Save and every time we would like go through the Raptor, we would just hear this like <laughs> of the um <laughs> do, 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 of the turbo. Just <laughs> I don't think I've heard a Raptor with a bigger that. turbo. That's cool. Yeah, it was so funny. Can you hear the so sand like, like blowing up on the side of the truck? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Pretty cool. Most importantly, we can hear each other because I'm getting hard of hearing now and I'm always like, mm -hmm. Oh, it's Rebecca, so. <laughs> and we have our helmets that's on gonna and everything. It's gonna be, oh, helmets! Yeah. True, forgot about that. Yeah. Maybe I need a helmet if I I don't have to for your road trip. I get a helmet. <laughs> no, in the house, like I just need a helmet. Oh. <laughs> just walking around like all those old bits of the stig, like in normal public places, yes. just like. <laughs> the only problem with that is I just have a kid tapping on the side of it, just constantly. The <laughs> divisor. What do you want? <laughs> So what are your concerns? I mean, other than range, any, any worries or like you're confident you're ready to rock, like let's hit the tray, hit the dirt. Um, I mean, just as with any new vehicle, you know, like I, like I said, if something happens, we're probably, we're probably going to have to call and get a penalty, um, which is not what we want to do. Uh, but we do know that we're just going to have to like modify our strategy and try to, um, try to pick the, the best route that's going to be the best for the car. I'm not really worried about the truck doing the rally in terms of like the terrain, like it, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, a, I'm a little worried about getting stuck in Glamis cause, just because it's so heavy. And I got us stuck pretty bad when we went out to practice. So that was it. That was like, I got that stuck <laughs> out of our- Not in the Rivian. No, not in the Rivian. I got us stuck in a oh. deep body at Diesel. Okay. Uh, Ooh. Digging out for four hours in 120 degrees. Whoa, um, that's a good stuck. That's beyond yeah. stuck. Yeah. What yeah. kind of air pressure are you planning on running? Like 12? You know, no. They it, higher. Higher. Yeah, they were like, you know, it's so heavy. We we got up Oldsmobile with 22. Okay. So I know it seems really high, right? But yeah. it's so heavy. And I know. Like, and I, I don't have. And, you know, Sidewalls go. Yeah. Yeah, don't necessarily have 
the like the KO chews have. It's you guys have easier to break a bead on on. The, yeah, supposedly. you guys have a the same issue that Bugatti has trying to go so fast. You guys are just so heavy. It's not the tire <laughs> tech's not there for you. Like yeah. you need to find those like commercial yeah. grade off road <laughs> yeah, tires. <laughs> Severe <laughs> duty off road. <laughs> I think they'll be great. I mean, they seemed great. Um, I think they'll be great. Uh, and you know, and and if we get stuck, we can always air down a lot just to get out. Yeah. And then air back in. You know, there's an onboard uh, air compressor. Is there? Yes. That is right. Yes. Oh, really cool. Great. That was That's my so next clutch. question. <laughs> yeah, that is so clutch. That that every off road truck will have that in five years. Yeah, sure. Yeah, really nice. In the past, we've been carrying like my giant ARB in the little suitcase, and it weighs like I don't know, 45, 50 pounds. And it's just and a big fat. Yeah. So it's nice to have that just boop, right there. Mm -hmm. What else, guys? I, did you, you tell try, us? Did you try a tank turn? Did no, they let you? We, try a tank turn. I don't know if they really want us to tank turn. We got to work on hmm. Ryan. Let it Wonder if. Out. Tank turn uses more electric. Well, it's just throwing all the power to all four wheels. Just in different directions. I guess, but I don't know. I didn't see a button or anywhere that you could push that would like change your rear steering or something. So that was I probably some custom code that they had. <laughs> just yeah, a dude on yeah. a laptop sitting in it doing it. <laughs> yeah. So, run. So <laughs> You said the suspension height setting is on the steering column for you for this? It was on uh, for the, our testing, but it's going to be in the UI when we get the truck delivered next week. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Ah, it's it's out of the way. way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and especially because I kept like signaling when I was trying to move the car up or down. <laughs> the signal, this, it was right under the turn signal. It was just, it was done. Turning right. Also. Yeah. Not also, turning Rebecca right. Was like, first of all, I said left. <laughs> Not, <laughs> and why are we getting taller? <laughs> I said left. Why are we getting taller? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, when does this start? Pardon my lack of reading. Um, next week. Next week. Oh, wow. Yeah. And end of next week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the ninth is our prologue. And then the 10th is the start of uh, competition. So just too far away to know what the weather will be like. <laughs> no. The first couple, first couple of nights will be really, really cold. It's always at elevation, and like last year it was seventeen degrees. Um, and it was, Seven. It was pretty miserable. Yeah. yeah. So That's actually, cold. Yeah, and this year yeah, with all, and, and, all the COVID protocols, they're going to be leaving the sides off of the base camp and stuff. So it's going to be a bit more exposed oh, no. and an escape. Yeah. The I good news I... is that we have a lot of room in the truck, so we can bring a bunch of winter gear. And then once yeah. we don't need it, just shove it in the trunk and forget about it. Sure. Yeah. And then it's extra weight up, up front. Yeah. yeah I, have front. A, I have a big old coat that I, that I bought two of them. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna layer up like the Stay Puff marshmallow. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I, I'm fully on board. Like I, I hate being cold yet. I live in a worst. place with winter, but like, I'll still take that. Cause I can always add a layer when it's hot. There's only so many legal layers that can come off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, legality depends on where you are. Yeah. yeah. That's right. well, well, I'm in the you're Bible belt. So. You're in the Bible. Yeah. I was just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is just what Jesus gave me. <laughs> Not okay. <laughs> yeah, so we planned we planned for cold temperatures in the beginning, and then you know we know in the end we end up in Glamis, and usually it's like eighty five, ninety. Yeah, Rebecca, what do you think? Yeah, I got that. All right. Um, you, yeah. There have been a shit ton of earthquakes that are happening down there right now. Yeah. Um, well, fun. So twenty twenty. Fires and earthquakes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the tricky bit is we, uh, yeah, we don't know what, where the route goes. So we don't know if, if things are going to have to change suddenly. And I mean, they've had a major um, down rain, sorry, <laughs> major rain <laughs> in previous years that they had to route around before. So I'm sure, you know, they've, they've got the contingency plans, but it's such a pain in the butt for them to change in the middle. 
So I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but yeah. And we've been lucky where we haven't been rained on during the rain. It's always been ahead of us. So, okay. Yeah. Hopefully. So drive hopefully. into wet landscapes as opposed to being rained on during the landscape. Kind of. Yeah. We, we just get our vehicles stuck in mud bog. It's always fun. <laughs> as a result of the rain. <laughs> Is... Flailing, flailing in the mud. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, come over here, you're gonna get stuck. Is the underside <laughs> it's like and, raising Arizona when he gets out? <laughs> <laughs> and and you can tell me if you can't answer this, but is the underside just like a flat, flat cover? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so that maybe maybe it'll help you float through the mud. Yeah. <laughs> so the only hit it with fluids, enough momentum. Yeah, just LED forty. The whole bottom just slide right over it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the only fluids that the truck has is just there's coolant for the battery right and then other than that washer fluid brake fluid. Brake, oh, brake, yeah, brake. brake fluid there those are it that's the three wow i mean I know, less stuff to think about <laughs> definitely yeah. that i mean there's parts and less fluid it's just that it's a giant computer yeah and like i can barely turn on mine <laughs> <laughs> How do you turn this thing on? What's the, what's the start process? I have a smartphone, guys, and I have to drive a computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, Put your, our, you're on a video our, call. Yeah. <laughs> Ours is going to be a little different than, the, I think, a regular vehicle because we've got to have kind of an emergency shutoff kind of situation because of the, the event, basically. Mm -hmm. Like a kill switch kind of thing? Uh, we, have a, we have a kill switch. Yeah. Um, hmm. Because as our engineer told us, EVs are either completely engulfed in flames or yeah. not at all. They're, there's um, not, they never catch fire. He's like, they don't catch fire. I mean, it's either a significant thermal event or nothing. <laughs> That's so reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds yeah. me, there's a terrible movie. Our little five -pound fire. There's a terrible movie I saw when I was a yes, kid <laughs> that my dad took me to and it, I don't even, John Travolta, and I don't even remember what it is, but there's a scene where someone has stolen two nuclear weapons and they're chasing them and the bad guys are trying to shoot the people that are running off with them. And John Travolta says, please don't shoot at the thermonuclear weapons. Like a bullet's not setting it off, bud. Like calm down. <laughs> but I cannot forget that. Like it's in my head for so when she said significant thermal event, all I could think was please don't shoot at the thermonuclear weapons. <laughs> but the, I mean, in the, in the same vein, he's like, so I work at a Volvo dealer and we have a lot of the hybrids and the hybrids, as somebody described the other day, is, it's almost the exact same thing. It's like when you're, when you're powering down the hybrids, either nothing happens or you die. <laughs> There's like no in between. Like it's, it's either perfectly smooth or you're dead. So is there a dude who has massive rubber gloves and rubber boots at work to flip a switch kind of thing for those? I uh, no, I, but I, I can't confirm because I steer clear of like as far away as possible when they're doing that um <laughs> this is so cool though i'm so excited to see how this pans out I, and i'm sure nowhere near as excited as you two are but uh, it's gonna be pretty dope and i think what's great too is that you know rivian first of all have been super supportive and on board 100 percent into this thing and when you combine the fact that they took prototypes from argentina to los angeles and now they're they're going in both feet with this. Like, I really talking feel like they are not just yeah. talking the talk. They are walking the walk in terms of really making an electric vehicle that can do what they're saying yeah. it can do, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, like, I'm stoked for the plug-in hybrid Wrangler. I think that's awesome. Um, and Jeep has said that they're going to put a, a charging station, like, in Moab, out on a few trails in Moab and on the Rubicon and that kind of stuff. And, like, that's awesome. And it's a great mm -hmm. first step. But... Rivian's really going, like, it's go big or go home with them. And I right. appreciate that frame of mind. Brave moves and super confident in their in the product that they're creating. So, yeah. And it it, yeah. it seems lot. like they're not, they're not rushing just to get something out there. And they'd rather deliver the quality and have it do what they want it to do as opposed to just, I know COVID shut them down, but, like, even before then, they were like, hey, I know we said this, but it's going to be a little longer. We want yeah. to give you guys something good. They want to yeah. get it right, for sure. But they're, they're like, to Emmy's point, yeah, taking leaps and bounds and willing to, to yeah, walk the walk. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, we've got like the Lordstown Endurance is supposed to come out in 2021, maybe end of 2023. I just did a video on this, but I can't remember my lines. Um, <laughs> but the Lordstown Endurance is coming out, but that's billed more as a work truck. Um, the F-150 electric yep. is supposed to come out in 2022. Mm -hmm. God only knows what's going on with that Nicola Badger because Nicola's just a big, fat, hot, stinking mess right now. Didn't they just um, walk away from somebody? Yeah. Well, Founder? Yeah, there was all kinds of GM was supposed to invest with them. And then Trevor, the CEO, got into some trouble. I mean, like, it's a giant mess. Um, and I'm just trying to stay far away from it, which is too bad because that Badger looks dope. It does. Uh, yeah. I think we're really going to do create some different opportunities for some different players to partner with them. And it actually, they're going to come out in a better uh, place. Mm -hmm. They had made it work the way this was supposed to work. So the interesting yeah. electric vehicle news this week was zero. The motorcycle company is partnering uh -huh. with Polaris to make like electric razors, which, Oh, as soon as I said electric <laughs> razors, that sounds so bad. But <laughs> Hey, uh, that um, SEO search is really going to suck for you there, buddy. Electric yeah, Razors not... is on lockdown. Really dying. Call good. Norelco. Um, <laughs> the, the Norelco I don't even know if Norelco is still a company. I hope they are. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, that, I mean. I wouldn't have remembered that. Yeah, I mean, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's, that's pretty cool, especially because, like, uh, you know, side-by-sides are super, they're really small, so – they're not that small. I mean, I don't know where I'm but, well, you know what I mean. Um, Some of them are, I are enormous. I would love to see a hybrid powertrain in like an ultra four vehicle so that you could have all of that mm. torque for all the rock crawling, but then like a giant V8 for just screaming across the desert. And I think a team that's able to innovate that and have just enough battery power so that you could get through the rocks, but not enough that you're adding a shit ton of weight to your ultra four, like, That'd be pretty remarkable. It sounds like it sounds like the perfect one would be one that torque fills. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. as as you you're like, oh, we got a ship. Nope, there's the battery. Like we're just gonna go nuts. Like, mm -hmm. oh, like a hybrid, like eco a 918 motor. powertrain, yeah. but for really small and uh, oh, that would be so so cheap and affordable. <laughs> that would be awesome though. <laughs> That's what the world needs—a lifted 918. Yeah. We, Forget the Safari 911s. Safari 918. Oh man, it would the suspension work alone would be insane. Because those are crazy heavy too, aren't they? Did you guys know that I I have a lifted Miata now? Yes. Yes. We yes. I think you had just gotten it when you came on the show the first time. Did I? I got it. You were got, you were it. literally we we talked and then you were headed to SoCal to pick it up. Oh, that's right. So great. Right. Right. <laughs> so how are things in the land of lifted Miata? Because as you know, uh, I have well, a very much not lifted Miata. <laughs> you know, well, Miata is getting like a whole suspension redo with an extra Ooh. inch of lift and some gusseting and such on in the subframe and some better skid plates after the Rebel Rally. So cool. We got a lot of work after the Rebel. What yeah, suspension is being installed? Uh, so Paco Motorsports uh just which kind of started this whole craze and that's a three inch it really Paco did three -inch right now and so Paco is like the go-to Miata lift yeah yeah as in the only Miata. So, <laughs> it, is, it is uh so he put out a four inch lift with some adjustable rally cross coilovers oh with, my god uh, extended ball joints and extended sway bar links and uh, not extended control arms, mm -hmm. but it allows you to get the maximum amount of travel, which is, I think, like eight and a half inches. That's okay. That's, that's not yeah, bad. That's, that's pretty dope. And like right now, I measured all of my angles and um, ground clearance and stuff, and it's, it's about nine inches of ground clearance. And then my angles are, I think it's like 38 degrees of approach. 40 of departure and like 33 or something breakover angle. Like it's not bad. No, it's not bad at all. There's yeah. definitely not 40 plus inches of fjording capability, however. <laughs> <laughs> so the, Probably. so you're going to get an extra inch of lift and are you keeping the tires? Those are general. Yeah. Those are general covers, 27 inch tires. So those are staying. Yeah. Those will stay. 
um, you know, I don't need to completely fill up the fender well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have, have a little Fair. room there. <laughs> yeah, um, metal on rubber never new. sounds good. Yeah, and those tires are brand new, so like I'm gonna keep them till they wear out, and then we'll make them. Then we'll make them again. Fair. Yeah. That yeah, that thing is so cool. It's fun. I'm, I'm <laughs> That's so fun. a big water crossing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For the oh, audio so audience, excited. Chris Chris just shared a video of it going through about an inch of water. <laughs> that's, that's Rebecca in the passenger we seat, isn't it? it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you made a splash? Look at that splash. Yeah, exactly. yeah. it's like halfway up the door. <laughs> There's yeah, one drop halfway up the door. You I need swear. a snorkel <laughs> next time. <laughs> you need a giant snorkel on it to get through that water. <laughs> oh, it looks so cool, though. Oh, it must be, oh, that must be the most fun. He's adorable. Every time I pass him on the street, because he he's parked upstairs, I'm like, I know, buddy, we're going to go for a drive soon, I promise. <laughs> you, liar. You slapped uh, your differential on it, too, didn't you? I slapped gears on it. Gears, okay. Gears. 538. So when it's in oh. first gear, it's pretty low. It's real low. Like, which really? Is, uh, 538 is real low. And we have determined that it is indeed a liquid slip back there. So, bonus. Bonus, yeah. That helps. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, you know. I, I had someone interested in buying my Land Cruiser, which it's been for sale forever now, but eventually it'll sell. Um, and it's a 94, so I don't have like the, the center diff lock button. It's a viscous coupler when it's in low range or whatever. And the guy was like, oh, I would... I want to do it, but I just don't think it'll do what I want it to do. And I was like, it'll, anything will do what you want it to do if you have no mechanical sympathy. Like, <laughs> do you want it to drive home or do you want it to get through what you want it to get through? Like it's, he didn't buy it. <laughs> he didn't buy your explanation or the truck. <laughs> Uh, either, both, either. Both. He was like, I definitely need lockers. And I was like, lockers only get you in more trouble. They never get you out. No. Can confirm. <laughs> Can confirm. Can <laughs> confirm. That, that's Ross who likes to sink ATVs in mud holes. So yes. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds like a good story. Uh, it's all of which one. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, okay. I think my wife would punch me in the face if I bought a lifted Miata. I might I do it eventually, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you might get punched in the face, anyways. Right? Yeah, I have a good chance. <laughs> might as well have a lifted me out of for it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're gonna get hit anyways. You might as well do it. Yeah. Right. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on with you guys. When did we talk to you guys? Uh it was like early March. Yeah. It was like right when shit hit the fan. Because yeah, it was yeah. Wow, yeah. Yeah, because I came I came back from a trip. And then we stopped going into the office like mid March, like March twelfth or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, crazy. crazy. And here we are again. It was, <laughs> it was at least again. four months ago because I'm uh, I was on Emmy's Instagram page and I can see weren't she picked up Buddy to drive home? So it was yeah. about four months ago. <laughs> yeah. And they canceled my are. Mongolia uh, trip, so that's put off until next year. Although postponed. Postponed, exactly. Um, canceled for 2020, postponed till 2021. And then I've convinced Emmy to do a monkey run with me in 2022. <laughs> nice. Oh, hell yeah. That's so I'm so great. excited. <laughs> do, they, do they stay 50cc bikes or do you get to go bigger? So the, the monkey run, it depends on the company, but the we're going to... We're signed up for the Mongolia monkey run. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be it'll, it'll be fifties. So you know, oh, Jesus. I'm gonna be over there. Yeah. I'm gonna be the biggest thing <laughs> on the face of the planet. Yeah. I, I gotta tell you, they they'll surprise you. But the one that the the mo the uh, Moto Nomad rally that I'll do next year, those are one fifties. So yeah. those are regular dirt. Well, regular dirt bikes. Regular, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> These are the 50s, right? Yeah. That's bigger, though. That's, a two that's bigger. The CRF? Uh, yeah. And then that's another, a different one, but it's similar. Um, 
That's my wheelie. Although I had to walk behind it for it. <laughs> <laughs> See, you can work oh, on it. Oh, man. There's so much fun to work on. And that's actually um, why I was asking how long ago, because I couldn't remember if I talked to you guys since I got it, but I bought a, um, a little like cafe racer motorcycle. Nice. So that I could ride around uh, town during COVID. <laughs> when um, the streets were actually empty. What'd you get? Yeah, I got a little CSC um, SG250. So it's just a hmm. CSC motorcycles. They're out of Azusa. They're a little Chinese. Um, Shinzu. Anyway, there, there it is. Oh, that thing is rad. It's so it's cool. Rad. It's the glory so of Instagram stalking. I can find pictures I of just it. about anything. Yeah, the glory of <laughs> real-time production. Yeah. Well done. I, uh, she's, um, it's a um, San Gabriel 250. So she's 250 cc's, and um, it's based on a Honda uh, motor. So it's very simple, and so it'll break a lot. Liable. So it'll break a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but that means I'll have to learn much more maintenance, which is what I want to be able to do by the time I'm in the middle of nowhere in Mongolia, I want to be able to work on those engines myself if I can. So uh, that's a good looking bike. I like that a lot. I love it. It's so great. It's like, I mean, the thing is, I haven't because it's still I'm, I'm working on uh, the 500 mile arc before I go in and have it. I'm going to have it regeared a little bit, and then um, they do all the little valve adjustments and stuff like that, mm. and do the checkup and whatever. But um, so I haven't like gone full out speed. Yeah, on it until after that and I'm not a full out speed person anyway but I did the other day have a, a where I skidded both front and rear oh that's fun <laughs> made a lot of noise <laughs> and felt like really cool because I did it right next to a fire truck <laughs> oh boy I mean good place to do it if you're gonna do I, it I, I mean it, the, it turned the light turned yellow and I was like I can go, I uh, know I better not. Cause they, I was like, if they go, I'm going, but then mm. they stopped. And so I had to stop suddenly and like, ah! and I was like, Oh wow. That felt pretty cool. I did that pretty well. Um, and then like the next day I was like, about two weeks before the rally, I probably shouldn't be riding around my <laughs> <laughs> screeching my tires and risking injury. If I'm going to be sitting in a Rivian for, you know, eight days with Emmy and, I'm not going to be able to tell her to jump out because I can't get out because can't of get out yourself. <laughs> body cast. This thing is twenty five hundred bucks. It's I'm okay. So yes, it's crazy affordable. But by the time you do all the little things to it, like I mine was five. Okay, and you yeah, that's in line with like yeah. what you'd expect. Yeah. So I switched out the seat and did the, um, I did the scrambler bars on it um, and did a couple of other little things and put a little, um, had them weld a rack on the back and stuff so that I can do a road trip with it, um, which is my next goal would be hopefully do a long road trip on it. Hmm. Just motor bike camp. Okay. That is like the most primitive way of getting around and, Seeing everything. Yeah. I'll be in support vehicle, but I'll do it in buddy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll be able That's to- That's a picture. About the same amount of luggage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> they carried a lot of crap when they did long way around and down <laughs> and up. And up, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the Bronco. Yes, please yeah. fill us in on this. Oh man. Because I didn't know about this. I just discovered this. <laughs> yeah. We did um, a, uh, well, it was a mockumentary. Uh, Jake Szymanski is the director and he's really cool. He's done a, a few other mockumentaries with like um, Andy Samberg. And we did this, we worked with Imagine Documentaries. They wanted to tell the, tell the story of, since the Bronco was coming out, um, they, you know, were taking a look at what the, what's the history of this vehicle and why is it such a like icon that everyone's so excited about bringing back. So they ended up writing a story about I, uh, a, um, a Bronco rider. <laughs> this was a road. This was the very first 67, very first, uh, Bronco roadster. Like, uh, so cool. It was cherry. Oh condition. It was beautiful. And that is Rod Hall's, uh, Bronco that he won the 
the Baja 1000 or the, well, at the time it was Mexican 1000. Um, I love the, the Motor Trend logo, how plain yeah. that is. I know, right? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so this, this little mockumentary film basically um, creates a, a, a spokesperson who started out as a Bronco rider. And he's the reason why it ends up being called the Bronco. And he wins the Baja 1000 and they bring him on as a, a spokes guy. And it's his story kind of follows the the story of the the vehicle, um, <laughs> as in like super cool and rough and tumble, and then suddenly kind of loses its way in the eighties and nineties. <laughs> the, the Bronco two. Bronco two, and oh. then the death of the the um, the that brand basically, and they uh, and he disappears. So this mm. whole documentary is about trying to find out, you know, like whatever happened to John Bronco? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> John Bronco. That's so good. It's really great. It's got it's so uh, funny. Um, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, isn't it? Uh, Bo Derek. It's <laughs> it's Waltz and Goggins, isn't it? Like yeah. well, well, That's I'm so eclectic. I love everything he's it's ever great. been in. He's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he he's so he loved that he loved that role. He I'm sure he did. He's embraced it. It was very fun to watch him just become and stay in the John Bronco, who's hilarious. And we got to do all kinds of different hair and makeup and stuff to him uh, for over the years. But, you know, at a certain point, we didn't want him to age anymore. So we're like, how do we excuse the fact that he's not like an old dude now? Mm. <laughs> so, it's a plastic surgery story that... <laughs> oh, God face replacement kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. You know, in a, you come up with in a room and, and, and throw it in and you're like, yeah, that sticks. So um, yeah, they, uh, it should, I think it's going to go on Hulu soon, but they've had a couple of screenings. If you follow Walton uh, on, on uh, Instagram, he announces the screening now and then. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to share that on everything because that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Problem is every video I find is a link is on YouTube and that's not helpful right now. That's not helpful right now at all. <laughs> yeah, do that. Um, I got to watch it and I was I was actually in the car, so I pulled over on the side of the road to watch it when they were doing like the first screening. And I just I laughed so hard because I didn't really know like I knew what it was about, but I didn't really know like how absolutely hilarious it was. And it just oh my god, it was so great. This looks like the so kind of thing that so you're like laughing so hard you're crying when you're making it. <laughs> we definitely like when he was when we were mocking up the uh, the John Johnny Carson show and he came out and he was playing the guitar and being in just an, a ding dong basically. Um, it was so <laughs> funny and we were trying our hardest not to laugh behind the camera and and then he's like answering these questions he's cracking himself up. <laughs> He rarely broke, but that day, for some reason, he just kept cracking himself up. But the, the 80s commercial that we filmed was so absurd. Um, when you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But that, we the wore the short shorts? was great thing. What's that? Isn't that the one where he wore the short denim shorts? No. Because <laughs> that was my favorite. No. <laughs> no. It's very, like, it's very 80s, like Don Johnson. Like, everything is, like, and pastel and Ugh. glass bricks and stuff like that is so bad. And they're just going, Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> the, the yellow on oh. yellow on yellow on yellow. <laughs> <laughs> or is that all oh white? I can't God. tell if it's vintage he's, tinted. It's the, yeah, the, the, it's got a little CP on there, but he's all in like a off white and the, and the, truck itself is yellow but in this particular commercial he's talking about his you know his truck like it's a like it's a horse and he even like he even pours carrots into the engine <laughs> what <laughs> there was like a so bucket good. of carrots oh I mean, that's so good classic broncos that i convinced these owners to come and thank god for them because usually when you've got a classic car people are so they keep it so pristine and so perfect that they don't want to risk dr even driving it around, getting it out of their garage or whatever. Most of these Bronco owners were like, yeah, where you want to, where you want to get it? And they were willing to take them anywhere. Um, like the, they would just <laughs> drive them anywhere for us. It was amazing. And that guy that owned the yellow was like, 
his was the most like museum quality because he okay. bought it out, he bought it out of a museum and has kept it museum quality and that that's the one we had to pour the carrots in and I was how like, did you present that it's just like so never going to a pour, we're gonna pour some uh how do you feel about some carrots <laughs> <laughs> It, so it's fine. Uh, Baby yeah, carrots. Oh, I feel like, like there's come like come on, come on, we'll do it. And I'm like, let me, our, let me go. I'll just talk to him. Let me talk to him. So we ended up putting like this, just this little, you know, ferny blanket, little furniture blanket, like over the engine, and did a little slight angle so you can't see it. But those, it was just a, a giant bucket full of carrots. Oh my gosh! Born into the engine. They still That's went the best everywhere. Thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so weird. They were so they were so up for it. It was great. I I was really impressed with how the uh, they're just a breed of their own. If you own a classic Bronco, you're like, let's fucking take it out there. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's fair game you that, you were able to get, that you were able to get Rod's Rod Hall's Bronco. Like nah, that's, that's insane. Awesome. That was clutch. I knew it was part of the story <laughs> that that he wins yeah. the Baja, and and this character is kind of like. He's kind of like the Marlboro Man meets Rod Hall, okay. you know, this model character. But he's, but he is like an unlike Rod, who was humble and just cool, and just classic, just stayed true to purest, you know, uh, basically a you know factory vehicles. It's amazing, and and he stayed pure forever. <laughs> John Bronco, <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> the antithesis of everything. He got sucked in. He starts selling just everything from shampoo to, to you know, a <laughs> like an alternative to VHS tapes, not beta, but like Bronco Vision. You know? Bronco Vision. <laughs> oh man. Anything to capitalize on the fame. So he's like the opposite of opposite of Rod. <laughs> That's so good. I hope it comes to Hula, dude, so I can watch it again. Because I really wanted to watch it with you oh, because I wanted to hear like all of the little stories and stuff. So I wanted to come to Hulu so we can watch it. And I, every time I see it, because you can't, like, I don't even have a final copy of it. <laughs> and, and every time I see it, I catch something else that makes me laugh where I'm like, I can't believe it's, it's, it's funny as it is. It's so, so absurd. And silly. I need a copy of this to show to my dad and present to him as if it was real. He owned a Bronco. Oh. I'm telling you, um, I told my family about this, and they all know that I produced this. And, and took it seriously. <laughs> they still texted and were like, so was this guy real or not? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, yeah, no, this has to happen. Like, the, you know the Blair Witch Project, how the Blair Witch Project was presented oh, yeah. as, like, a, like, found footage, like a real thing? We got to pull it off like that. That's amazing. <laughs> It's funny because with Walton playing the character, we're like, well, he's going to be easily recognizable. And it kind of, you know, like, it's not like a, if you're casting an unknown, people will actually go, oh, shit, was this guy real? Because Ford let us get into their archives and we comped him into their old commercials and stuff. Like, we oh. created commercials, but we also, like, comped him into shit so that it actually looks like he's in their old ads and stuff. So it would be totally believable but because it's Walton Goggins some people are going to recognize him obviously but like my parents don't know him from Adam <laughs> like, was, was that for real wait was he for real <laughs> wait, what else has what else has Goggins been in he's right now in a show called the unicorn um he was in the justified what was that Justified. He was in Justified. Oh, Justified. oh and, and what was the religious one where the guys, the, it was a family and they're like the evangelists? Gemstones? Yes. yes. Righteous Gemstones. Uh, righteous Gemstones. Uh, righteous Gemstones, yeah. He's ridiculous. He was also in, uh, he's got a weird role in American Ultra, which oh, was a, a, a yeah. movie that not a lot of people saw, but I will rewatch that one fairly often. That, one. yeah, not, better than it ever got credit for, but also not great yeah, yeah. he was in hateful eight too I forgot and now yeah. i'm cruising through his imdb obviously yeah oh yeah that's right he wasn't in too yeah. it's just okay he was uh, yeah summary of what he's been in everything been everything strange. he's been in yeah. a lot pretty strange but yeah he was so excited to come on just because he, he, he can of, of the bronco vehicle obviously so he's like yeah let's do this um, but yeah, that was kind of unprecedented that Ford let us like go in and, oh, I got to, I actually, an Emmy was ready to m murder me because um, I never talked about it um, with her. 
I got to go in and see the clay models of the new Bronco. And you didn't we, tell any of us. No, well, I told, I told, I mean, yeah, I was it, but, sh but I couldn't say anything about it. So. Uh, <laughs> it for, Ford's me. good at that. Like Ford is good like, at that. Yeah, with the GT too. Like, oh, surprise. Here's everything. Yeah. But they when were I, about like really kind of, I feel like Rivian's, you know, like Rivian's amazing and we're there. They're like talking to the right people about, how to build, what you need, like what's useful, what's great. I felt like when I met with Bronco, when I met with the Bronco team, um, they were, John Bronco. were doing, they're really talking. Yeah, when I met with John Bronco and he was telling me about this new vehicle. Um, you know, it's a, they really are, they've been talking to the right people and consulting the right folks about what make, what would be the dream, you know, for yeah. this type of off-roader versus this type of like weekend warrior, you know, kind of thing. And, and they've, got a highly customizable uh, vehicle. Cool. Now, I don't know if you guys had heard this, but I think it was last week, you know, when, when the Bronco first came out, we were like, oh yeah, Sasquatch package with the 35 inch tires and blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And everyone was super stoked on that. But then everyone realized that you couldn't get the Sasquatch package or the sassy package, as I like to call it. Sassy um, package, oh, that's gonna stick. Yes. <laughs> Came with the sassy package with the manual and the manual is where you have like the crazy ass 97.1 uh, to one crawl ratio, right? Yep. So everyone, when it first came out, was like, wow, you need to have a manual here. Well, Ford recently, like last week was like, okay, you can get a manual now with the sassy mm -hmm. package. So it's I don't a sassy know manual. doing that all along <laughs> and like just the way, yeah, this was just a way to like get more press, you know, a few weeks. We after, talked about that last week. We're like, know, it's, yeah, it's, another round of like, bronco news the the plan? <clears throat> they're they're in right. but we're sorry go ahead the end result is the same the end result is the same is it now people can can get the sassy package with the manual but it remains to be seen like what will the take rate Probably. actually be like we all might talk about how we want the manual but like what's the take rate of a manual on a rubicon it's not low and you really get better, you really get better low yeah, the crawl ratio on the automatic in the in the Rubicon's like seventy seven to one, and I think in the manual it's eighty something to one. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's a, it's a significant difference. But I, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see like once. I'm goes on almost sale, willing to bet different. that more people who only drive their Jeeps on the street are buying manuals now than people who actually off road them. <laughs> yeah, because driving a manual it sometimes off road. Sucks. Yeah, it can yeah. suck. I mean, it can driving suck on the road dude, too. <laughs> Yeah. 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 I don't know. A sassy manual on 35 sounds pretty delightful. <laughs> sassy <laughs> manual. <laughs> if I got a if I got a bunch, I would get this I would get a sassy um <laughs> so good. Oh my um, god. No? S A S Y P K G. <laughs> sassy <laughs> package. <laughs> I'm now thinking of so many other connotations of what a sassy package adds up to. Like, yeah. careful. Just be, careful. If it's on your Sasquatch, you're probably okay, but anywhere else, who knows? Oh, Ford is sending three uh, sports, three of their the smaller ones, the sports to the Rebel this year. Sweet. And Shelby Hall, the granddaughter yeah. of Rod Hall, is going to be driving one of them. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Probably uh, not the one got, that has they've got crazy stuff on the roof rack, though. Yeah, no, I don't think so. But they've got two journalists. Well, a journalist and her navigator, and then Shelby Hall and her navigator. And I, I, it's terrible that I don't remember the, her, their names because the rally is all about, about navigating. Um, and then two Ford engineers. What's that? I miss. What did you say, Rebecca? That it's all. It's Penny. Penny Dale is the navigator. Oh yes, Penny Dale, and then um, the other gal is Betsy Johnson. That's it. Um, but I don't. I don't know anything about what what they have really done. Uh, yeah, and then those are the two engineers, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The front of yeah, that so truck that looks strange. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just like the way the photo was taken. I'm not a fan of the sport. I'm not a fan of the sport. I love the the full size i don't i don't like the little one i don't like it don't yeah like very dismissive <laughs> okay. i don't like the little one <laughs> i i told them I was, as we're walking i was like no 
No. No. Not Try sexy again. enough. Try again. <laughs> that was up. Nope. I like why I don't know why you even bother. <laughs> They're like, there's a whole market for it. And I'm like, I don't care. Nope. <laughs> so there's probably much more of a market for it, unfortunately. No. Well, and I the little it. one actually yeah. has some good, I mean, at least if you go by the numbers, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good numbers wise. I mean, I don't know how it's gonna actually behave because no one's driven it yet, but I like it on stuff. Steelies. It does look cool yeah. on Steelies. Is that Steelies well, are coming back? There's Steelies on that. Cool, but it doesn't. You can get Steelies on the Defender. Like it looks yeah. not bad. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. And then the drive, the first drive is right after the Rebel Rally. Uh, so I'm <laughs> supposed to be on that. Well, I'll get a chance to drive it um, end of October. Sweet. The Sport or the full size? The Sport. I don't know when the full size drive is going to be. I, I bet that. that's later. That's probably going to be much later. They're going to hold that thing. Yeah, because they're going to want to have a big program, and so they're going to wait until they can get a lot of people out there. Although, we, there was a ride-along program in Detroit that we went on. Look! <laughs> so much better. I love it. That thing is pretty yellow, awesome. Yellow is the color to get, man. Yeah. It looks so yellow. That's got to be the yellow. same one that Jeff had at the office like last week um jeff had a bronco at the office well they they had like a bronco <laughs> they had like a, a ford had something where jeff went and there was a they i think it's the studio model that they had it was like a roller but uh -huh. they're just pushing it around i think they installed like a tiny electric motor in it well they also had the mustang mache there <laughs> <laughs> the the Mach-E, yeah. The Mache. <laughs> okay. I'd still like to drive some Ford products, so I'm going to call it the Mach-E. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ross does, yeah, Ford just yep. direct them my way, please. <laughs> That's uh, it. <laughs> I'm off the list. <laughs> the problem is you're way closer to a press fleet than I am, so it's cheaper to drop them at you. <laughs> so the, the Mach-E, yeah. There was something else there, too, I thought. <laughs> Uh, um, I can't remember. I just think I the full size know. looks so much cooler, but that's just because that, that's what I would want, and that, and that's why yeah. I would look. Yeah. I think all of us probably. Yeah, all, without, uh, there's no without way second that, question. That, that Ford is not marketed to us. Like that's that's not. No. It's it's yeah. marketed to somebody that wants to buy a Ford Escape, and they're like, "But what about this?" And they're like, "Yes, that's better." <laughs> or <laughs> it's marketed for the person who needs a Subaru Outback but wants to buy something American. Yeah. Taller. Yeah. <laughs> is it taller? Have you been around an Outback lately? They're huge. Yeah, they are pretty big. Yeah. And they have like nine inches of ground clearance. Yeah. I don't think that's still a station wagon. Like, my Miata has nine inches of ground clearance. Technically. <laughs> Miata has nine inches of ground clearance. That's what everybody needs. <laughs> Hurry up, Ross. Get yours taller. Oh, God. <laughs> I have to get the water out of the passenger floor first. But oh, no. God, what? Yeah. Something is clogged. I think one of the drains is clogged and it's just it rained a lot the other night and the, so I have a rubber floor mat and the, there was water around the floor mat and there wasn't so, water around the floor mat when I got out of the car the night before. Does so, your oh, AC okay. evaporator have a drain behind the club box? Nope. It does not. Okay. There are points of entry that are probably very, very clogged from parking it under trees every night for 16 months. Because the, the Land Cruiser has that issue every now and then, but all I have to do is undo two bolts in the engine bay and I can like run a clothes hanger up into the drain and put the bolts back in. It's a piece no, of paper. I'm, drain I'm well. supposed to buy trombone brushes. So like those 24 inch yeah. long, like bendable sticks with a little fuzzy thing on the end. And then you fold the top part way and then put something behind it so it doesn't automatically close on its own and then kind of run the brush down and poke it hard enough that all the debris comes out, but not so hard that the drain itself comes out. Um, oh, that's yeah. fascinating, because I'm sure Buddy could use that. <laughs> <laughs> does Buddy have a roof? He does, Buddy has a soft top, but somebody never uh, could get never. a knife to the <laughs> Unfortunately, that has already happened. Ah. Yeah, it kind of sucks. But, and at first the latches were not working very well, but I realized that those latches are adjustable. I had no mm -hmm. idea, and mm -hmm. yeah, and then I went in and we were looking at it, and I was like, Look, there's like a little nut here. Oh my God, it's like amazing. I don't need to buy new latches. They're like a hundred <laughs> bucks here. 
So now his top looks much, much better. But I do have a slash in that back window. Not that mm. I really care, but you know, <laughs> packing tape nice days only. Um, packing tape it closed. I know, I know. I mean, if I if I had bought, well, I don't know. It's nice to have the glass window back there because then it doesn't like cloud up and everything. But do I want a glass window in an off road car? I don't know. Probably not. No, less glass is better. Yeah, yeah. My favorite so, part about riding around with Emmy uh, in the in Buddy is that I'll, I looked over and <laughs> there was, I'm like, what is that? She had, rather than deal with the check engine light, she put a piece of tape over <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Well, it's just a check engine light. It's fine. <laughs> what I really, what there's actually a, a piece of tape on there permanently now because it has an aftermath steering wheel so there's no airbag so the airbag light goes on so that definitely has a piece of tape on it but now the, he's all smogged and the check engine light is fine it's all fine <laughs> that, <laughs> well, that's uh, hilarious that's great <laughs> oh, sweet oh cool on well, on yeah. that note <laughs> on that note because so, everything's fine that's a good note to end on it is yeah, yeah. Fine. Well, fine. 2020 is fine. It's fine. Yeah, freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, all of the above. Thank you, Italian Job Reboot, for giving me that one forever. <laughs> Anyways, so thank you again for joining us. We wish you best uh, of luck. What do you want to plug? Well, you can follow the rally on rebelrally.com. They post daily updates um, they, on their Instagram, on the Twitters, on the Facebook, and then you can follow us live on our live tracking. Um, we are Team 140, and the live tracking is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. <laughs> you can see where we are. You can see uh, what terrain we're going through. And yeah, we're Team 140, Team Killer Watts. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that us? That's us. That Jeep is us. Nice. Says one five two. No. No. Oh, never mind. That was somebody else. (laughs) (laughs) Not us. The only thing to remember when if you guys live track us is that it's not a timed event. So if someone is ahead of us, like don't panic. We're not losing because it's not about who finishes first. It's about who navigates more. And so you'll people will be gathering points ahead of you, but it's just because you haven't gotten there yet, or Mm -hmm. you know or we'll look like we're like super way ahead. And then at the end of the day, it's like real close. It's just from a uh, staged, staged yeah. Uh, starts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, we'll have to have you back on afterwards. Give us the full race report and obviously everything about the Rivian. Yeah, on the Rivian, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I def- I'm so no. curious. So curious about them. I- I'm, I don't have a big enough following to let Rivian let me drive any of them, but I was like, I want to drive one. <laughs> Just don't have 60 grand to go throw at it. <laughs> Someday. We're pretty lucky. We're, we're the first non-Rivian people to get in the car, which is, that's, it's, I'm pretty honored that they, they trust us as a team to take care of this vehicle. Um, and so, you know, she's our third teammate and We've got a great navigator and a pretty good driver, and we've driver. got a good truck. So we're just gonna do what we can. <laughs> just gonna do what we do, and um, you know, if we get a podium, that's awesome. But really, this is all about, you know, seeing what we need to do to make an electric vehicle successful in this kind of an environment. Sweet. We want the- awesome. New. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, last time when you were on, you were like, we don't know where we're going to go after the Rolls Royce. You definitely uh, went somewhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> awesome. I think right. I can hear my children yelling in the background. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks for having us on. Thank, thank you know, for coming on. Like- we, so we'll probably do another four months. I mean, sure. I don't know. Who knows uh, what four months less. will look like from yeah. now. Hopefully less. We're going to need a report sooner than that. Aliens so. could be here by four months. <laughs> I, I watched three sci-fi alien-related movies over the weekend. I'm good. No more. 
It's the only thing left on my 2020 bingo card is aliens. <laughs> uh, but didn't we right. confirm that they're already here anyway? Wasn't that one of the things that was like, oh, that's... Oh, yeah, the, the Air Force, like, yeah. declassified something. And we're like, we knew about that five years ago, Air Force. Pay attention. <laughs> yep. Independence Day already happened. We know. <laughs> well, barring uh, alien invasion, we'll, we're always up for coming on and chatting with you guys. We will Thanks. definitely have you back. Awesome. Yeah, we will take you up on that. Thanks. All right. <laughs> so the good news is I'm going to stop recording now. <laughs> <laughs>